Hi everyone. In this video session, we are going to look into next question in computer organization from the topic instructions pipelining. This question was asked in the year 2013 for two marks. The question is consider an instruction pipeline with five stages without any branch prediction. Fetch instruction, decode instruction, fetch operand, execute instruction and write operand. These are the stages, those are given. The stage delays for fetch instruction, decode instruction, fetch operand, execute instruction and write operand are 5 nanoseconds, 7 nanoseconds, 10 nanoseconds, 8 nanoseconds and 6 nanoseconds respectively. There are intermediate storage buffers after each stage and the delay of each buffer is 1 nanosecond. A program consisting of 12 instructions I1, I2, I3 up to I12 is executed in this pipeline processor. Instruction I4 is only branch instruction and its branch target is I9. If the branch is taken during execution of this program, the time in nanoseconds needed to complete the program is. So we would start by looking at a typical branch instruction uh, in this 12 instructions program. So as it is said that only I4 is a branch instruction and all other are non-branch instructions. So the program would look like this. I1 is some arithmetic operation or some uh, load or store operation or anything else but it's not a branch instruction. That means the program would get executed sequentially till we hit I4. So with this horizontal lines I am just representing some instruction which can be any instruction other than branch instruction. Now I4 is a branch instruction and typically uh, before the branch instruction there can be some arithmetic operation uh, which sets some flag in the processor uh, you know status register. So let's say this is a typical arithmetic operation let's say it is decrement some register R3 and I4 is the branch instruction which uses the result from the previous instruction to check whether it has become zero or some negative number or something. So let's say it is checking whether uh, this uh, value of R3 is zero or not. So jump on zero, this is a branch instruction, jump on zero to some target instruction. And let's say the target instruction has a label equals to label one. Now what is this label? This is a this is a relative address of the target instruction. So we would uh, go in details what this label is in few moments. And after I4 we have some non-branch instruction till I8 right and I9 is the target instruction of uh, of this branch instruction and it has got a label associated with it. So this is label one and it itself is a some kind of you know non-branch instruction. So this is label one which is label associated with I9 and if this branch is taken then after this instruction after this branch instruction I9 would be executed. And as it is given that we need to consider the case where the branch would be taken and we need to find out uh, the time taken by the uh, by the uh, program with uh, with the consideration that the branch would be taken right and after i9 we are having three more instructions i10 to i12 which are also some non branch instructions right so this is what a typical program with the uh, branch instruction at as fourth instruction would look like. And what is this label? Label is actually offset offset of the uh, target target instruction from the current instruction. So let's say each instruction is four bytes in width. 
right that means each instruction takes a storage uh, of uh, 4 bytes Mem memory space of 4 bytes right so in between i4 and i9 there are total 4 instructions right so the 4 instructions that those are in between the branch instruction and the target instruction there are 4 instructions so total memory space those would be taken by this 4 instructions would be 4 byte into 4 that is total they would be taking 16 bytes of memory right so this label would be basically a value that would be equals to 16 so in place of label 1 you can think of uh, a numeric value 16 and how this 16 would be used to calculate the target address is that when this uh, branch instruction is executed arithmetic logic unit would add 16 that is the value of label 1 with current program counter counters value with current program counters value and when this instruction is getting executed program counter is basically containing the address of instruction i5 right and with pc if we add 16 then what we would get is the address of i9 so pc plus 4 so pc is uh, uh, address of i5 and pc plus 4 would be address of i6 because each instruction is 4 bytes uh, wide so i5 would take 4 bytes space pc plus 4 would uh, point to i6 pc plus 8 would point to i7 pc plus 12 would point to i8 and pc plus 16 would point to i9 right so label 1 is nothing but offset and after arithmetic logic unit has added this 2 this would be loaded back into the program counter so it would be loaded back into the program counter and then um, and then the next instruction that would be fetched is i9 so after arithmetic logic unit uh, is has done its job of <coughs> adding the offset with the current program counters uh, value and storing it back into program counter then the next instruction that would be fetched is from the address of program counter and that is nothing but the instruction at the target address right that is i9 so this is how uh, the program would execute so one thing uh, you should note here that <coughs> till execute stage of the branch instruction the target uh, target instructions address would not be known right so all the instructions those would be fetched in between uh, this branch instruction is uh, fetched and um, and the target instruction is fetched all those instructions would have to be discarded if the branch is taken and if the branch is not taken then the pipeline would uh, proceed as as it is without any change sequentially but if the branch is taken then all the instructions which would be fetched in between i4 and i9 they have to be discarded and their effect on any registers would have to be discarded right so we need to consider the case where the branch is taken and we need to find out the number of uh, the time taken in nanoseconds so first of all we need to find out the total clock cycles those would be taken to execute uh, this 12 instructions considering the branch would be taken and with that uh, with the total number of clock cycles if we multiply the clock cycle time period then we would get the total time to execute uh, this uh, program right so first of all let us uh, find out the clock cycle time period and as a rule you might be knowing that the clock cycle time period is the maximum stage delay plus any register delay or buffer delay so here the maximum stage delay among this five stage delays is 10 and with that if you add one nanosecond which is a buffer delay then we would get 11 nanosecond and that would be the clock cycle time period right so clock cycle time period would be equals to 11 nanosecond that is 10 plus 1 where 10 is maximum stage delay and 1 is buffer delay so it would be 11 nanosecond 
right and why the clock cycle time period should be kept as 11 nanosecond so that all the stages can complete their job and plus uh, the stage de uh, the buffer delay can also be accommodated within the uh, within the time period now come to the number of clock cycles those would be taken by executing this program for executing this program considering at i4 after i4 i9 would be fast right so the first instruction i1 is going to take five cycles right i1 is going to take five cycles i would draw uh, by consuming a little lesser space because i need to draw a lot many um, stages so let us consume less space so there are five stages in execution of each instruction and i1 is going to get finished at c5 similarly i2 would get finished at c6 right c6 i2 would get finished i3 is again non branch instruction so it would be executed sequentially no problem in that so on c7 i3 would get finished now in i4 it's a branch instruction it will also get fetched in uh, c4 and it would get executed till c8 right and the stages are uh, instruction fetch and decode instruction then fetch operand and execute instruction and write operand and from our discussion you might be knowing that the target address would not be known before execute instruction stage of the branch instruction right and <coughs> so all the instruction those would be fetched be before i4 after i4 and before i9 those has to be discarded so as there is no branch pre prediction so the physically next instruction would be taken up and processed through the pipeline till we get to know that actually these are not the instructions those are to be fetched but it is actually i9 those have to be that have to be uh, fetched and processed so this instruction by then by by the time execute instruction uh, calculates the branch address by then i5 i6 and i7 would get fetched right so they would get executed till this point when we would get to know that the next instruction should be i9 so i5 i6 and i7 would get fetched till the execute instruction stage of branch instruction is uh, executed and after execute instruction we would get to know that i9 has to be processed so these instruction would be discarded basically and i8 would not be never be fetched but after execute instruction i9 would get fetched right so i9 would get fetched and this is i9 is getting fetched uh, in the cycle c8 right c8 it is getting fetched and then there are five uh, stages in i9 so c8 c9 c10 c11 and c12 c12 is the clock cycle in which uh, i9 would complete its task and leave the pipeline and after that this i10 to i12 these are uh, non branch instructions so they would be fetched sequentially and they would uh, uh, take three more cycles so after c12 they are going to uh, take three more cycles to get completed right so i10 would get completed in c13 similarly i11 would get completed so this is going to complete in c13 this is going to complete in c14 
and I12 is going to get completed in C15, right? So I do not have much space here left, but I hope you have got the point that uh, I10, I11 and I12 would take three more cycles after C12 at, uh, which, uh, at which point I9 has got completed. Now for 15th clock cycles, how much time is required is 15 into clock cycle time period, which is 11. So 15 into 11, 15 into 11 is nothing but 165. So option B is correct. Thanks for watching. Bye.